I'm Blake Hargreaves. Welcome to Future Stops. You're hearing a performance by Austrian artist Hermann Nitsch. Nitsch is known internationally for his provocative, taboo-breaking artworks which harness the imagery of religion and the body, exaggerating them into some say mystical, others say confrontational realms. Nitsch incorporates multiple art forms into the Orgies and Mysteries Theater, a recurring performance work that overloads the senses with evocative elements of conflict and tragedy, myth and religion. It seems inevitable that this artist's work would come to incorporate the pipe organ and manifest a unique and unmistakable approach to the instrument. Leopoldo Siano is a music philosopher, sound actionist, and author who has intimate knowledge of the work of Hermann Nitsch. Although I, I teach musicology at the University of Cologne, but I, I don't like anymore this word, musicology. It sounds too academic for me. And uh, um, um, besides that, since some years, I am uh, developing my activities in, a, in another direction, quite different from the uh, traditional uh, musicology. I, instead of musicology, I used to speak about uh, phonosophy, that is knowledge through the sound. And uh, Hermann Nietzsche, for me, is an authentic philosopher, if I uh, may use this word, because for him, the work with sound as part of his uh, theater, uh, the theater of orgies and mysteries, the sound is a tool uh, for, uh, for knowledge, a philosophical tool, but uh, a tool that uh, involve uh, in a very intensive way, all senses. Uh, at the beginning, I had a very ambiguous uh, relationship with his work, yeah, because uh, he's uh, uh, dealing with blood, with the en uh, anim entrails of animals and so on. And uh, I, I was a little bit shocked at the beginning, uh, uh, looking at his uh, performances and so on, uh, yeah, I, I was even disgusted. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I had uh, a secret fascin fascination. And I needed about, uh, well, uh, five, six years in order to understand why. I had this, uh, why this art fascinated me so much. Yeah, because, you know, the, the things that uh, uh, disgust you, that uh, at, at the beginning you don't like, at the same time they can have uh, a, a secret fascination. And uh, yeah, that, is, that has to do with the deep layers of our psyche as human beings. And... Uh, um, Indeed, Hermann Nietzsche with this art is consciously working with these deep archaic layers of human consciousness. Ludwig Lusa is the organist at St. Polten's Cathedral in Austria. He is an accomplished performer and improviser and has been offered a special dispensation by Hermann Nietzsche to interpret his music. Only since uh, 2005 I discovered uh, uh, his organ music. And of course, for me, as organist, it was great. What uh, I, I was, I was fascinated. Nietzsche understood per, for me per, perfectly the, the basic of the basic of organ, the nucleus of organ. Therefore, the the, the overtones. Nietzsche be, 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 begins his improvisations mostly with me with one tone, and then. He, he used an, an, a second tone, an octave, and, and so and so and so on. This is this is um, a, a, an, an important basic, maybe for us organists. He makes mostly 
um, great, great crescendo between 20 minutes and decrescendo, and one crescendo and decrescendo. And I think this is also a, a very interesting basic of the organ music in, in belongs belonging on the length, the length of the, of the sound. It means uh, an, an idea of, of uh, eternity. For him, the organ is very important, also because he has a mystical tendencies. And many musicians that has mystical tendencies like organ. Uh, I, can, uh, I can mention Anton Bruckner, uh, that is one of the favorite composers of Nietzsche, uh, among uh, other things. And also Olivier Messiaen, that is also an uh, uh, important composer for Nietzsche because uh, yeah, Messiaen he was a, a, a fantastic uh, improviser at organ and he had this uh, synesthetical uh, uh, ta talent. He, he saw colors during he was listening to sounds. And uh, I think that uh, yeah, organ, the pipe organ, is also a sort of cosmogonical symbol Yeah, because uh, it's a huge instrument, and uh, the, the player uh, every time is uh, creating the world again, so to say. I don't know if you know uh, this uh, uh, illustration from the Baroque time in a book uh, by Athanasius Kircher, that was a, a, a priest, a German priest, uh, living, uh, a German monk, a Jesuit, and he wrote also treatises about music, and there you, you, you can find a very beautiful illustration, a very, very beautiful picture uh, with the, the so-called world organ. This is an organ symbolizing the, the, the six days of creation. And the organist is actually God. With his playing, is gradually creating all, uh, all levels of creation. Let's say it's so, uh, that way. In 1977, a tragic event in the life of Hermann Nitsch causes him to confront what, for many, is the largest of questions related to God. The music created in response to this life-changing event sets the conditions in place for the organ to take on a role of greater importance in Nitsch's work. In uh, 1977, his wife, Beate, uh, died in a car accident. He was, she was uh, 38 years old, quite young, and Nietzsche was the same age at, at that time. And uh, yeah, Nietzsche, of course, was destroyed because uh, yeah, he loved very much his wife. And his wife was also a person that believed very much in him and in his art. And, uh, uh, well, uh, Nietzsche uh, had very, uh, experienced a very dark uh, period of his life, and uh, Nietzsche, step by step, uh, started to, to work again, and uh, from a musical point of view, the Requiem that he performed in Bologna in, uh, in summer uh, 77 is a very uh, important uh, uh, point, a turning point for his music, because before uh, that, that moment, um, Nietzsche uh, yeah, was a little bit frustrated because he wanted to have music in his theater, but he was not able to write music, uh, as I said, and uh, he, he just uh, used noise and uh, um, people screaming, uh, 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 screaming choirs, so to say, and the noise orchestras. Yeah, he did a sort of excessive primitive music, primitive in a in a in a positive sense, in a primitivistic sense. Uh, he, he tried to have a, an orgiastic music uh, with these means. But then in Bologna, in this uh, uh, church uh, with this very uh, uh, good acoustic, he, he began to use organ uh, in a performance and to use drawings. That is long sustained 
sounds. And that was the beginning of a new phase of, of, of his music that then uh, he developed uh, in, uh, in a, a very organic way. And ultimately, uh, the organ was integrated into the Orgies Mysteries Theater, which is something that's performed every year. Is that right? No, that, that was the, the desire of Nietzsche. Nietzsche uh, the, the want to perform uh, this uh, sex tagespiel, this uh, that, uh, thea theatrical piece that lasts sex six days and six nights every summer. But, uh, you know, it, it, it is quite expensive to organize uh, something like that. And uh, he uh, succeeded to perform this uh, big uh, event only once in 1998. And uh, now there is the project to repeat it uh, uh, next summer, 2022. But uh, yeah, it is a, a little bit uncertain because of pandemics, uh, etc. But uh, he, uh, yeah, uh, before uh, the 90s, he already uh, performed uh, uh, his theater of orgies and mysteries in a in a smaller version, for example, three days or two days or one day or uh, uh, six hours performances, eight hours performances, and so on. And yeah, the organ is a very important part of this uh, uh, action, uh, action of the six days, yeah, because in the, according to six, day, six days of the creation in the Bible, he tried to, 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 to retell. Uh, the, the the story of the world uh, using archetypes uh, in a Jungian sense, yeah, in six days and six nights uh, with simultaneous actions in different parts of his castle, but also in the landscape, because the, the Austrian landscape is also integrated. And also there are also med very me meditative, contemplative moments where you have to look at the uh, sky in the night to contemplate the stars. And uh, there are many or orchestras and ensemble and uh, actors acting all the time for six days and six time. And uh, yeah, the, for, for six days and six time, you are listening in, in, the, in the background a, a fifth uh, played by the organ. Uh, this interval, it is so to say the, the, the ground, the, the pre, primogenial, ground of this uh, theater piece, uh, this fifth, this uh, avoid fifth, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, all other sounds are in the integrated in this uh, primeval space of this in very archaic interval, the organ. Both Leopoldo Siano and Ludwig Lusa have worked with Hermann Nitsch in support of his pipe organ music over the years, and the experience continues to inform their practices. It was a very great, great experience. Uh, like, as a, for me as musician, if 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 I could uh, meet Johann Sebastian Bach or Wolfgang Mozart, a uh, very great, very great. Um, it was in, um, I think, it was in. 2019. Um, my first, my first idea was only that Hermann Nietzsche play plays the organ and and nothing, nothing, nothing other, nothing else. But uh, um, during the during our discussions with uh, Tanella and uh, Nietzsche, the project grew up uh, and and became bigger and bigger. And at 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 the, at the end, Nietzsche also. Proposed that uh, at, the, at, the, at the third part, in the, in the third part, when I play or, 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 or we both together, should also um, came a, a choir, a mixed choir with with, with chords, uh, major chords of of the five um, vocals. Before the practice, nobody, nobody, no, nobody knew anything what we sh shall do. It was it was a hundred percent improvisation situation. It was very, very interesting. And then he came, and all 
people, all, all, all singers were fascinated of his, 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 his personality. And then it was very easy. Uh, he gave um, the instructions. Uh, looking back, I have to say, it wouldn't have occurred to me to do, to do it uh, how Nietzsche uh, do it. I had the, the, uh, the, the honor to assist him at the organ. And yeah, this experience uh, during the rehearsals and the concert at the Basilica di Santa Maria dei Servi in May uh, 2019 was for me extremely formative. I could uh, see that Nietzsche has a very uh, instinctive uh, approach to sound and is uh, uh, working with sound as if uh, sound would be blood or uh, another colored substance. Uh, Nietzsche improvises his uh, uh, solo concerts at organ. He has some structures in his mind at the beginning. For example, uh, before the concert, uh, before the rehearsals, we, uh, we knew that uh, he wanted to have four parts, that is four mov movements, uh, um, almost like in the classical sonata or in a classical symphony. Four, four movements. He had a basic structure. I, I would say that for him, is uh, it doesn't care uh, if he's working with uh, colors or with blood or with objects or with collage or with sound. For him, it's the same thing. In in that sense, he, he, his art is a Gesamtkunstwerk, a total work of art, because he's uh, um, yeah. Nowadays, one would say a multimedia artist because he's working at the same time in many directions with different media. And uh, yeah, I can say some anecdotes of, uh, about this performance. Yeah, during the, the rehearsals, uh, Nietzsche said to us many, many times, please do not act following music principles. And that is paradoxical. Yeah. Uh, me and uh, Josef, the other assistant, Smutni, we had the, uh, yeah, the, the function to, to uh, actionate the registers. And Nietzsche gave us a sign when he wanted to have a new layers. And we just had the, the freedom to, 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 to play a register uh, at random. But yeah, I am. Uh, a musician. I had a, an education as musician. Therefore, I, I tried to follow a sort of musical uh, um, sense, a musical uh, process, but he refused that because for him, the chance, the, the aleatoric uh, element has to have an important role. And uh, yeah, and, and other things that he said to us, yeah, he said that the most important thing tonight is not to be afraid of mistakes. Even if we make mistakes, it is up to us to accept them and love them. Uh, that, that is a very Zen Buddhist in some way, like, a little bit like John Cage. Uh, and also during his uh, 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 organ performance, that's the same like in his uh, organ music or music for uh, orchestra music or music for string quartets for his theater. There are th these are the, the basic uh, the, um, principles, addition and subtraction of layers and the ju uh, juxtaposition of dense sound blocks. And uh, uh, besides that, sudden interruptions, yeah? Uh, uh, interruption, then we have this, uh, uh, suddenly this silence, this is a deafening silence. And uh, he constantly decides what to do in the moment, right now. And somehow everything he does is right. Yeah, he's really an artist in the spirit of the 60s, like also a little bit like the Fluxus artist or Fluxus. Um, uh, the, 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 these people uh, that uh, developed the, the performance art, uh, action music, uh, these events, and so on. 
and uh, they, they developed uh, this art of the now to act in the now following his uh, own uh, intuition
You're listening to the Future Stops podcast, an initiative of the Royal Canadian College of Organists. My name is Blake Hargreaves, and I'm your host as we explore the world of the 21st century organ. We just heard today's feature, an excerpt from Hermann Nietzsche's 2019 solo organ recital at the Angelical Festival, recorded in Bologna's Basilica di Santa Maria di Servi. Normally on Future Stops, we like to speak to the artist directly, which wasn't possible in this case but we do have a statement from Herr Nitsch himself on the relationship to the organ. I'm not an organ virtuoso, but the organ is the right instrument for me to perform the music of the Orgies Mysteries Theater. My music makes use of drawn-out tones, uses sound blocks, cluster arrangements, roaring tutti structures, tonal and dissonant, up to overlapping noise. Everything that strings, woodwinds, brass, and synthesizers do in my orchestra can be implemented through the organ. I can equally create shrill sounds and meditative tone arrangements. I can also indulge in keys and wedge myself into dissonance. The force of the birth of galaxies makes one think of the sounds of the spheres that permeate all of this. The singing noises and the music that cause the orbits of the heavenly bodies also reach us. The ringing, resounding, and whizzing of the harmony of the spheres of the universe becomes audible. Kepler's firmament, permeated by radiant music, is noticed. Fire, light as the cause of everything, is represented by the starry sky. Innumerable solar systems with their planets let the whole of creation resound in the exultant, roaring, calmly sustained chorus. His complete thinking, all his ideas, I think, have uh, no, no uh, principal liturgical uh, relations. But in the in the third, fourth, five sense, uh, we we have we have interesting interesting verbindung uh, connections and uh, basics. You know, you know that that Hermannich, um Think about about the whole world in uh, go back to the to the antique uh, the Greek Greek time and and uh, all myst- all all mysteries of all uh, cultures of, of of all cultures and uh, comprehensive to the whole universe of of course and and and, and he is also fascinated and interested in the Catholic uh, ritus in the in the the Catholic ritual, and in, uh, I think in all Catholic ritual things, and therefore we have a lot of verbindung and connections. If you listen to such music, or if you if you even uh, if you also play as I did, I, I assisted Nietzsche. Uh, of course, uh, you 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 are plunged in a in another state of mind. You are totally emerged in the sound processes and you you forget time the common time the uh, the time of, of daily life and you are in another temporal dimension and above all in the music of Nietzsche you experience this vastitude of space because Nietzsche actually with the sounds is creating uh, uh, surfaces and uh, frames and uh, yeah colored surfaces and uh, uh, sp- spaces and with his sounds he he evokes the vastitude of cosmic spaces and of cosmic processes of this uh, uh, e- ever changing uh, uh, movement of all things that is also very gradual, a very slow movement. The pipe organ is a musical instrument which can take a team of more than 50 people years to build, containing over 10,000 individual pipes crafted, voiced, and tuned to speak in resonant harmony with each other and with the building in which they're contained. What kind of music should or could be made with such an instrument? As our guest described today, the music of Hermann Nietzsche is inspired by all mysteries of all cultures, is comprehensive to the whole universe, 
music through which we're forgetting time and transported to another temporal dimension, invoking the vastitude of cosmic space and cosmic processes. It seems inevitable that an artist like Hermann Nietzsche, concerned with these ideas, would come to the organ, and that the organ's thousands of pipes would satisfy the intention to invoke an intimate experience of such infinite ideas in a physical live performance. Hermann Nietzsche's art, as it pertains to the church, raises questions about the fine line between respect and taboo, which will no doubt be debated for generations. But perhaps in the blind abstraction of his music, we find the answer that has been there all along. We'd like to thank Leopoldo Siano and Ludwig Lusa for joining us today. The solo recording we used for our feature was published by Dici Di Angelica and the recording of Requiem für meine Frau Beata by Alga Margen. And we thank them, along with Hermann Nietzsche, for assisting us with this program. We'd love it if you would assist us too in the production of a vibrant conversation on social media at Future Stops and Future Stops Podcast where you can bring your voice to the questions raised by the art of Hermann Nitsch. Future Stops is a podcast from the Royal Canadian College of Organists, produced by Andrew O'Connor, with Sanjay Parker as community manager and executive producer Elizabeth Shannon. I'm your host, Blake Hargreaves.